Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a common Swagger UI using SpringDoc API, which is based on Open API 3 specifications. As you see on the right hand side, we have multiple microservices running. Now, each one of these microservices need not carry the baggage of UI to only to expose the Swagger UI, right? Instead, we can have a centralized UI which can expose the uh, Swagger UI by aggregating all the API definitions of each of these microservices. Now, if there's a way, if we can expose slash v3 slash API docs on each of the microservices, which the centralized UI can leverage and aggregate all of them and show it at uh, one common place. The way it will look like is this. On the local host, basically this is the centralized uh, URL uh, for the UI. And this is the page which will be shown. As you see in the dropdown, each of the microservices will appear as an entry in the dropdown. And you can switch back and forth between different microservices. So whichever microservice is selected, the corresponding API definitions would be shown on the screen. Now in this demo, we are going to run everything on a Kubernetes environment, but you can, if you want, tweak the code a little bit to make it work on any environment. Let's dig into the code. So this is the source code for microservice one. As you can see, it has a REST controller and a API exposed. It's a simple API which returns a friendly text back. If we see the POM for this, uh, it has the main uh, dependency is the Spring Doc Open API Web MVC core. What this dependency does is it, it exposes all the API definitions on a URL by default, which is slash v3 slash API dash docs, which we just saw in the few moments back in the video. Now let's uh, create a Docker image of this uh, application. So what we are going to do is we would run Spring Boot build image. So it will create the Docker image for this application. It's going to take some time till it builds everything. So I'll pause the video here. Okay, uh, we are back. Uh, since the Docker image has been created for this. Uh, let's go and check it out in the Kubernetes. So this is the Docker desktop, which I have it on my local. So if I do Docker images, so there you go. Uh, we have a Docker image for the microservice one application. Now let's see another microservice, which we have microservice two. Uh, the structure is pretty similar. Uh, we have one REST controller, which has a hello2 URL exposed. It's pretty similar to the microservice one. Uh, it's just to give you a gist of you know, how it, uh, the APIs can be. Uh, it's a simple API, but you can have as, as complex as APIs that you have in your application. The POM is uh, similar to what we saw for microservice one. Uh, the important dependency here is the Spring Doc Open API Web MVC core. So let's go ahead and build a Docker image for this as well. So again, I'm going to run MVN Spring Boot build image for this. This is also going to take some time, so I'll pause the video here. Okay, uh, seems like the Docker image has been created. Uh, again, let's go and check. This time it's microservice 2 and we have an image for that. So we have both our microservices set up. Uh, let's take a look at the common UI application. So I have this project called Open API Common UI. Um, let's take a look at the POM for this. So it's basically, uh, it has a dependency on Spring Cloud Starter Gateway. We'll have a Spring Cloud Gateway. Uh, 
we also have spring dock open api web flux ui which will serve the swagger ui for us uh, since the application is running on uh, kubernetes uh, we have dependency of spring cloud starter kubernetes uh, fabricate and fabricate config uh, what this is used for is basically the service discovery on application startup it will uh, discover all the services that are deployed on the cluster it will uh, basically show all of them aggregate all the api definitions for them and uh, show it on the ui now if we go into the source code it has a controller called swagger controller which is a rest controller the important uh, api which is exposed is this now this uh, this uh, endpoint is really important this is the default endpoint which the swagger would start serving on when when you launch the application right um, if you see uh, the method uh, basically it uses the discovery client which is nothing but this uh, discovery client object it uh, discovers all the kubernetes services which are deployed now essentially what it's doing is it basically gets all the services and filters out the cube cube related uh, services right so there are kubernetes native services which are running such as kubernetes cube dns and stuff we don't want uh, to expose all that using the swagger api so what i'm doing here is filtering all those out and for each of the rest of the services what i'm doing here is uh, creating an API, uh, basically a URL uh, with the endpoint v3 slash API docs, which the microservices are exposing, uh, which can return the API definitions. So the central UI uh, would have all the microservices URLs configured at a central place, uh, and we'll see how it serves up uh, on the UI. Let's go ahead and build a Docker image for this as well. So I'm running MVN Spring Boot build image. Again, this is going to take some time, so I'll pause the video here. Okay, uh, seems like uh, the Docker image has been created for this. Let's go ahead and verify that. Okay, now we have Docker images for all of them, two of our microservices as well as the common UI. Uh, let's go ahead and deploy this. So if I have to see what what applications are deployed already, I'll run the kubectl get po. As you see, there's nothing deployed as of now. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, one by one deploy our microservices. So first I'm going to run a command kube ctl create deploy microservice one using the image that we just uh, created uh, so i'm doing everything from the command line but if you wish you can create a deployment and a service yaml file and do a cube ctl apply on that but for this demo i'm going to stick to this command line so it says uh, app created so we see the pods here so let's see the logs for this. So as you see, the application has come up cleanly. There's no errors that we see on the console. Now let's go ahead and deploy the microservice to application. For this, I'm going to run the kubectl create deploy command again for the microservice 2. It says uh, the app has been created. Let's take a look at the logs. As we see, the app has come up cleanly in this case as well. So both our microservices are deployed. Now what we'll do is create a Kubernetes service for each of these, right? So now what I'm going to do is uh, run a command called kubectl expose deploy microservice one. 
with the name of microservice one. Uh, what this will do is create a cube Kubernetes uh, service which uh, serves the microservice one application. Okay, it's created. Now I'm going to run the same for microservice two application, which will create the service for microservice two. Okay, both services are created. If I do kubectl get SVC, I see the microservice one and microservice two uh, service. Now both the microservices are deployed. Let's go ahead and deploy the common UI. I'm going to run a command, uh, the create deploy command again, but this time for the common UI and the image that was generated uh, when we built using Spring Boot uh, build image. Okay, this has created the deployment. Let's go ahead and see the logs for it. As you see, the application is starting up um, and it says started. The application seems to have started now. Okay, so both the microservices are deployed and the common UI is also deployed. Now, let's take a look from the browser how it looks. But before that, uh, let, let's uh, do a port forward uh, so that we can check it out from the local host. So what I'll do is kubectl port forward deploy common UI port 8080. So what this means is uh, on localhost 8080, uh, the request will be served on the common UI uh, deployment, which is running inside the Kubernetes. Okay. So now when I launch the browser, and say localhost 8080. You see this uh, Swagger API came up and in the drop down here, I see two microservices. So by default, the microservice one is selected. Now, if you see here the generated uh, URL and it shows the API here, which is the API slash hello one. If I want, I can go ahead and try this out. If I say try out, and say execute it says hello world from one if i want to pass an id let's say test and then execute it says hello test from one so so the api is kind of working now i can switch the to the other microservice which is microservice 2 uh, so it brought the details of the microservice 2 and you see here the api changed to hello 2 Again, I can go ahead and try this out. I can say hello and it will work as it is. So you see the power of uh, this central UI, right? It aggregates all the microservices in one place. That kind of keeps the microservices lightweight and uh, all the UI heavy lifting is done here. Important thing is each microservice has to expose the API, which was which we exposed at slash v3 slash API docs, uh, which we saw in the code uh, moments back. Right? Now, one important thing which I would like to point here is uh, if we are using some kind of reverse proxy or an API gateway, uh, which we are doing in this case right now, uh, the important thing to show you is this piece. Uh, in the bootstrap YAML, uh, the server.forward header strategy has to be set to framework. Otherwise, uh, this thing, uh, the server's URL would not have this, uh, the reverse proxy, the context path, basically. It will not uh, show that. And the API, even though it will be listed here, it won't uh, work if you try it out um, and see if it executes fine. Uh, that server dot forward header strategy has to be set in the UI as well as each of the microservices. So if you go ahead and see the microservice resource application properties, uh, the server forward header strategy is set to framework here as well. Uh, other than that, 
this the UI. Uh, if you see here, Cloud Kubernetes discovery has been enabled and all namespace was set to true. Uh, this is important if you have microservices deployed in different namespaces within the Kubernetes cluster. So having all namespaces true enables it to discover the services irrespective of which namespace it's deployed to. Uh, this is the standard gateway uh, routes that are mapped. So if you see microservice one uh, is mapped. So the context part microservice one, if the request comes there, it will redirect uh, the request to HTTP microservice one colon 8080. Now this, HTTP colon microservice one is the service, Kubernetes service. Uh, this is how you basically do the DNS uh, for the services running on Kubernetes. So if you would have uh, deployed this on a namespace other than the default, uh, you would have to mention some other namespace, uh, whichever namespace you had deployed that uh, over here. But since we had the default namespace, we don't have to specify that. Okay, uh, that's all I had for the demo. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we saw how each microservice exposed the API slash v3 API docs and the central Swagger UI aggregated all the API definitions to show the on the browser the page like this, right, where each microservices are listed on the drop down. So, thanks for watching the video. Uh, do subscribe to my channel if you liked it and uh, like the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.